Good afternoon, UDIM family. This is Reverend Dustin, and I want to welcome you to another week of our virtual interdenominational worship service. This week, we are blessed to have one of my dearest friends, the Reverend Derwin L. Montgomery, join us as the guest preacher for today. Reverend Montgomery is a uh, pastor of the First Calvary Baptist Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He is a uh, state representative, and he also uh, serves as the regional director for the American Cancer Association for North Carolina. We are excited to hear from him. He is a dynamic, powerful preacher, and I guarantee you that you will feel better at the conclusion of this service. So Angelo is here to take us into our time of praise and worship. But before he does, let us pause and look to God for a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship in this space. We are ever grateful for your presence that flows even through virtual time and place. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you will allow us to experience. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you for the ways in which you continue to show us that you are our God and we are your people. Have your way in this service and we will give you praise. This is our prayer in Jesus name. And we say amen and amen. All right, Angelo is going to lead us in worship. Prepare yourselves to go further. And then after Angelo has concluded, you will hear from my dear friend, Reverend Derwin L. Montgomery. Amen and amen. Let us worship God together. I'm 
Grace and peace from God, our Father and our Mother. I am Pastor Derwin Montgomery, pastor of the First Calvary Baptist Church here in the beautiful city of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I am so elated and excited to join you in worship on today. Uh, I am grateful uh, for Pastor Pickett, Reverend Pickett, uh, uh, extending the opportunity uh, and the invitation to come uh, and, and to fellowship with you all and to break the bread of life together here on this Palm Sunday. So happy for you all and pray that God's blessings uh, go all the way from uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina and go all the way up uh, to Dayton, Ohio. And so grateful uh, to, to, to be uh, with you all on today. There, there's a word that I'd like to share with you that comes out of gospel reading found uh, in the 21st chapter of Matthew, Matthew's gospel. Uh, we find the words in which uh, I want to use uh, as the foundation for our conversation today. Matthew, the 21st chapter, Matthew, uh, the 21st chapter. And if you find your way uh, to the sixth verse, we hear these words pen uh, in the gospel of Matthew, Matthew uh, 21 and 6. Hear you the word of the Lord. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Won't you pray with me? Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. God of grace and God of mercy is yet again that we arrive at a preaching and teaching time. And God, we pray right now, God, that you bless your people as they receive and hear a word from your throne of grace, God, that it would meet them right where they are. Open their hearts and minds that they hear not from a man, oh God, hear not from me, oh God, but that they would hear from your throne of grace. God, I pray right now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be acceptable in thy sight for you and you alone are my only source of strength and my only redeemer. Amen. Amen. 
I want to talk uh, with you for the time that we have together today uh, from the subject, looks can be deceiving. Looks can be deceiving. I, I want to let you all in, in on a secret up front um, that, that, that I, I have deprived myself uh, for the majority of my short life uh, from experiencing something absolutely amazing. God has granted us so many gifts in this thing called life. He, he's, he's made so much that we can enjoy. And, and, and unfortunately, I have deprived myself of one of the joys that God has made uh, for us in, in, in this thing called life to experience. I've deprived myself for the majority of my life up until probably the last two or three years of experiencing the joy of eating broccoli. Yep, 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 yep. I, 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 I did not like broccoli. I, I despise broccoli, uh, not because I did not like the way that it tasted, uh, but, but from a kid all the way up until just two, three years ago. I didn't eat broccoli because I didn't like the way it looked. I, I refused to eat broccoli because I didn't like what it looked like. Oh, but but I discovered the joys of air fryers and 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 I decided one day just to test it out. Now I, I threw a few pieces of broccoli in the air fryer and seasoned those bad boys up, only to discover uh, that. I had allowed my eyes to keep me from enjoying one of the greatest things God has put on this earth, broccoli. Yeah. So now today, uh, probably three or four times out of the week, broccoli is a part of my meals. But for so long, because of what it looked like, I didn't eat it, didn't enjoy it. Truth be told, for many of us, uh, it may not be broccoli, but there's something in your life, some place or space uh, that because of what it looked like, because of how you perceived it, what you thought it was, whether it was a friendship that developed after uh, you thought that a person was mean, ugly, or nasty, only for you to spend the time to get to know them. And it wasn't because of anything that they said or did to you, but because of what they look like. Yeah, maybe it is a place or a space, your favorite restaurant that you go to now, and uh, the first few times that you drove by it, you, you said, I would never, ever eat in a place that looks like that, only to discover that when you went in there, uh, you didn't know whether it was the way it looked or what, but the way they seasoned their food was so good to you. Yes, over and over again in our lives, we often allow what we see. Uh, to 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 make judgments before we're able to fully experience or understand what a person, place, or thing has to offer. Yeah, looks can be deceiving. Matter of fact, there are not too many things in life that are always what they appear, always what they look like. Yeah. Not very few, not very many things always are what they look like. Truth be told, over and over again in our lives, we've made decisions based upon what we've seen only to realize that looks are deceiving. Uh, that's what we find in the text today, uh, as I would suggest to you, as we see this image of Jesus coming into the city, uh, as it's described, a triumphant victory, a triumphant entry of Jesus on this Palm Sunday. Uh, as he came into the city, uh, 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 he was riding on a donkey. The text tells us that he has a donkey and He's riding into the city, and as he's coming into Jerusalem, uh, they begin to cut branches and lay them in the streets, and they take off their cloaks and lay them in the street that not even the hoofs of the donkey would touch the dirty dirt on the ground. Uh, and if you understand and know the symbolism and, and the reason and rationale of 
these palm branches being laid in the street, we come to know that they are a symbol often used in military victory celebrations that when they're coming back from a victory, they lay and they celebrate by laying these palm branches in the streets to signify a victory has come. But here comes Jesus, not in a chariot, not with an army, not uh, with armor bearers on all sides of him as he comes into Jerusalem, making a statement to everybody around, I'm here and I'm king. No, that's not the image of Jesus that we see depicted in Matthew, the 21st chapter. No, the image of Jesus that we see is a low and meek Jesus who comes riding on a donkey. Not a whole lot of flashy things, but Jesus riding on a donkey. For many people who would see this, uh, uh, I know that the question that's asked at the end of the pericope I read for you, uh, that the question of who is this man was because of what he looked like. No army, no chariots. They said, this is Jesus, a prophet from Galilee. This Jesus, a prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee, comes into the city. Triumphant victory, triumphant entry. Riding on a donkey, no chariot, no army. Yet, they sing Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest to celebrate his entry. Yet he's coming on a donkey. No chariots, no army. We come to realize and know that Jesus' entrance here precedes what we would know will happen over the course of this week as we go into Holy Week and we begin to remember and reflect uh, how Jesus would be uh, taken up and tried in an unjust court only to be crucified on a cross and Many of the same folks who stood out on this Palm Sunday singing Hosanna to the highest will be some of the same folks who would yell crucify him as he is tried in an unjust court taken to the cross on Calvary to be crucified. But let's sit here for a moment in this place, seeing this Jesus coming on a donkey, no chariot, no army, and he is to be king. To many people looking, to many people uh, witnessing this, they would beg the question, how is it that this Jesus can bring victory over uh, us and have victory in a place like this when he comes on a donkey, no chariot, no army? How in the world can this Jesus have victory in a place like this. I don't know about you, but every now and then I've been in places and spaces of my life where I prayed to God. And when God showed up and I looked at the way that God was answering my prayer, I had questions with Jesus. I had questions of God. I wanted to know, God, how in the world are you going to answer my prayer when you show up looking like this? I, 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 I'm going through some stuff. And God, I need you to show up with everything that you have, because sometimes when we're going through things in life, when we're struggling and we're coming to God, pleading and praying, praying and pleading, we want God to bring everything in God's arsenal to come and to fight on our behalf. We want God to bring every tool that is in God's disposal to advocate and to intercede on our behalf. We don't want to wake up after praying our favorite prayers to God and see God sending somebody riding on a donkey, no chariot, no army. To leave many who are watching begging the question, how will victory come when God shows up like this? How will victory come when I prayed for God to show up and God looks insufficient when God shows up? Yeah, 
sometimes in this life, we can be deceived by what things look like. Because for those who were naysayers, who saw Jesus riding into the city on this donkey, no chariots, no army, and they believed that this Jesus was incapable of bringing victory in this place, they believed that Jesus was coming to fight for a worldly victory and did not understand that Jesus came not to grant them a simple worldly victory, not to take the crown in a worldly sense but to take the crown of crowns, spiritually opening a door that all of us might have life, we have life more abundantly. Yeah, what's true is that God often shows up in ways in which we don't understand and don't expect. So many times we expect God to show up in Manners that blow our mind. Sometimes God shows up in subtle, still, small voices. Sometimes God shows up in the beggar on the street who gives you a word of encouragement right when you're getting ready to throw in the towel. But if you let what you see get in the way of what you know God is able to do, You'll walk right past the beggar on the street. Yeah, sometimes God shows up in the cashier at at the coffee shop when you're handing her uh, your your, your, your money to buy your coffee and she smiles at you and tells you, have a wonderful day, giving you exactly what you need in that moment. Sometimes looks can be deceiving when we expect God in so many other places and God shows up looking different, walking different, being different. For us, I believe the image of Jesus on Palm Sunday coming into the city riding on a donkey, no chariot, no army, is a display uh, of God's ability and desire to show up in our lives in unexpected ways, to show up in our lives in small and unassuming ways to show up in our lives using the basic things that are around us, showing up in our lives using the things that most people would toss away. He was riding on a donkey. Most would not have used it for such a task as this, but Jesus found value in using the donkey to enter into Jerusalem. Yes! God has a way of using the unusable, sharing in spaces and places that seem unassuming. And God calls us in this moment to see God in a new way, to believe that God can show up in our lives in ways that we cannot always expect, to see God showing up in the eyes of the little girl who walks down the street right next to us, to see God showing up even in those in which we despise. Yes, God can use anyone because God has a way of using those things in which we've set aside and tossed aside. God has a way of showing up in ways that when we look at them, we don't always expect that God would be there. Reminded of a story of a young guy who went off to college and his grandmother gave him a Bible to take with him to school. Of course, he knew his grandmother would give him something like that when he went off to school because she was a churchy church woman. Uh, she was at church every Sunday. She was even set on a front row with her good church hats. But every now and then as he was in school, he would call his grandmother and talk to her about what was happening and what was going on. Every now and then as he was in school, he he would call her and, and share with her how things were going. And every time that he talked with her, she'd always ask the same question. Are you reading your Bible? 
And every time she asked that question, he would respond with an affirmative. Yes, I'm reading my Bible. There was a point as he was in school, he called his grandmother and shared with her uh, that he was struggling financially and, and he had run out of money and he didn't know what he was going to do. And his grandmother said to him again, uh, are you reading your Bible? And he responded to a yes, grandma, I'm reading my Bible, but I don't know how reading my Bible is going to help me in this situation. And, and she said, I, I promise you, if if you read your Bible, uh, you'll discover uh, something in the word that that will help you in your situation. He hung up the phone uh, and, and still struggled with where he was. A couple of days passed by. He called his grandmother again and said, grandma, grandma, I'm still struggling and I and I need some help and she said to him boy you need to go and read your bible she suggested a bible verse for him they said said as a matter of fact i i think you ought to start in the 23rd psalm because you keep calling me and telling me about the problems you keep calling me and telling me about your struggles and you've been telling me you've been reading your bible and and and, and you telling me even now that you're struggling financially i told you if you read your bible You'll find something in God's word that'll help you for what you're going through. Hangs up the phone with his grandmother, goes and grabs his Bible, turns to the 23rd Psalm. And as he's reading through the 23rd Psalms, and he hears and gets to the words, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou. And right at the word thou, he sees a $50 bill taped to the inside of the Bible right there at the 23rd Psalm. He picks up the, the $50 bill out of the Bible, calls his grandmother back, says, Grandma, I found the $50 in the Bible. And she said, I know uh, 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 that you hadn't been reading your word because if you've been reading your word, you would have discovered that there was something in there that could help you with where you were. I came to let you know uh, and share with you uh, that just like uh, this young man did not believe that there was something inside of the word that could help him in his situation because he perceived that what he needed uh, needed to show up in a different way. Uh, I want to let you know uh, that, that, that sometimes looks can be deceiving and we have to always understand and know and acknowledge that God has a way of showing up in many ways. And I'm not suggesting to you uh, that if you go back and you open your Bibles that magically there'll be a $50 bill taped to the 23rd Psalm. No, I'm just suggesting to you that the very things that you believe won't help you in your situation sometimes are the exact thing that you need to run to. And of course, if it's God's word somewhere nestled in there, there is a word that is nurturing and will speak to our hearts and our minds. We've got to take the time to get in his word, to study his word, to trust in his word. And there we'll discover that sometimes looks can be deceiving. But if we rest in God's word, rest in his presence, We'll realize God shows up in so many different ways. He comes to support us. He comes to deliver us. And even in those moments of deliverance, it doesn't always look like what we think it should. But as long as God is there, God can do whatever God wants to do. And God's presence is in the midst. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. So grateful for the opportunity to share with you today. I pray that God richly blesses you and keeps you even in this season, this moment, and this time. And that you remember and know that in the chaos of the world, God remains your peace. Amen. And I say, go in God's grace and God's peace. God bless you. Oh, come on, put your hands together right now. Come on. We just come to celebrate the name of the Lord. Is that all right? I'm chasing after you. No matter what I had to do. Because I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you. No matter what I had to do, 
Cause I need you more and more I'm chasing after you No matter what Cause I need you more and more I'm chasing after you No matter what Cause I need you more and more Sing more and more Sing more and more Sing more and more Sing more and more I'm chasing after you No matter what
Amen. We are grateful to Pastor Derwin Montgomery for that phenomenal word. Uh, of course, as I named, Derwin is a great friend of mine, and I am so grateful that he could join us in this space. Well, receive this benediction. Now may the mountains rise in praise. May the valleys bow in worship. May the trees sway in adoration. May the rivers overflow with exceeding joy. And may you, the children of God, always be reminded that God loves you. Go in peace. Amen and Ashe.